Welcome to another NCIX PC showcase, guys. We've got the 507AG, which is an $1,100 system that represents the best of the, almost the best, but definitely excellent bang for the buck from AMD. Oh, did I mention that it has a brand new, wicked awesome graphics card in it? Yeah, you heard it here. So now let's take a look at the outside of the system. It uses an H230 chassis from NZXT, which is what I'd consider to be an eco-friendly or a budget-conscious quiet case. No frills, no gimmicks, no like fancy like swords hanging off of it or anything gamer looking like that. This is more like a stealthed gaming case. It has adequate cooling for the components inside, but you don't really realize how much horsepower there is until you actually put your foot on the pedal. Speaking of the pedal, the front bezel has nothing to do with the pedal of anything, and it's plain plastic whether you get the white version or the black version. On the inside, you find three five and a quarter inch bays as well as the front vents that are able to take in some air from below here. So you can actually put your hand under the case here and really feel that air intake in the front. On the top of the chassis, we find power, Microphone, headphone jacks, USB 3.0 ports, two of those, and a reset switch. The only complaint I have about top-mounted I.O., because it really is great for a lot of people who put their towers next to them, is that from time to time, cats can step on them and cause uh, unexpected reboots. On the side panels, you find not a whole lot except, ah uh, yes, more ventilation for those front fans. So between the bottom and the sides, you're going to be able to get a fair amount of air in there, and it'll become more apparent why we need all that intake once we open up the system. On the back we find eight USB 3.0 ports, two eSATA ports, a PS2 keyboard mouse combo port, SPDIF optical out, as well as da -da -da -da, gigabit ethernet, 7.1 audio, and I should mention that all those USB 2 ports are 3x power, which is great if you're using high-powered peripherals on unpowered hubs. Very, very handy. And then finally, two DVI ports, a display port, and an HDMI port on the graphics card below, allowing you to run multi-monitor iFinity, whether it's for gaming or whether it is for productivity. Opening up the system, we find some pretty juicy hardware. Now, first of all, you got some noise dampening foam. This isn't the high density noise dampening foam that you would usually find on a more premium silent case, but it's not going to hurt matters at all and it may just help a little bit. More important than that is probably just the fact that it has just solid steel side panels on all sides, and then a front panel that doesn't have any front-facing ventilation because that helps block the noise from the user. We find an extremely clean interior. This is something NZXT does exceptionally well across their line of cases, and that is enable excellent cable management. So that coupled with the 750-watt M12-2 modular power supply from Seasonic means that you can hardly find any cables inside. The CPU is cooled by a Corsair H40 in push-pull configuration, so that is with two fans, and it is an FX8320, which is AMD's lowest end 8 core, which is often a great route to go if you're building a value system, because you're getting all 8 of the cores, and you can do the overclocking later on your own, but of course you can spend less than you would on the more expensive CPU. The overclocking ceiling might be a little bit lower, but you're still going to get the bulk of the performance you'd get out of the more expensive chip. We're using 16 gigs of Kingston blue black memory. Okay, so blue is the series, but black is the actual color, and it matches perfectly with the 970A UD3 board in there from Gigabyte that provides all that sexy 3X USB power I.O. that you saw in the back. The graphics card is a Radeon R9 270X, so this is extremely powerful, architecturally not that different from the outgoing Radeon 7000 series, but what it does do is come in at a very aggressive price to performance ratio. Storage is taken care of by a single Kingston 120 gig SSD and a 2 terabyte WD green drive, so that's your fast boot drive and your slower but obviously much larger storage for things like games and movies and music and applications and all of that good stuff. And I think that pretty much covers everything that's inside except for the physicality. <clears throat> physicality. At the front, 
one of the drive cages has been removed from this configuration, and this is for a very good reason. It, is, it enables much freer airflow from the front of the case directly onto the graphics card, which in a configuration like this where you're liquid cooling the CPU is going to be the most important component to get fresh air delivered to. And did I mention that that 750 watt power supply will easily support a couple of graphics cards in Crossfire X? And did I mention that you can get amazing bundle deals with the system if you check out the link in the video description below, including an unprecedented deal on BenQ's 27 inch 2560 by 1440 high resolution monitor? Make sure you check those out. Now I haven't done this in a while, but it is time for a but wait, there's more moment. Because this system is, like I said, 1100 bucks, so just over $1,000, and it comes with almost $250 of games that matter. So if you're upgrading an older system, the odds are you weren't playing these games already anyway, so you probably don't have copies of them anyway, so it looks like a pretty tremendous value. You get the new Tomb Raider, you get Far Cry 3, you get Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon, you get Crisis 3, and you get two games of your choice out of the Never Settle Forever bundle because they're included with the R9 270X graphics card that's in your system. So that reduces the effective price of the system down to around 850 bucks, which is a screaming good deal for an eight core, a current gen awesome graphics card. I guess you could call it next gen because we're filming this before it's released or I don't know, time travel and you know, oh, 1.21 gigawatts. Anyway, don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this from NCIX.com and definitely do check out this system. It's pretty awesome.